the remote learning environment, it can be quite difficult for us as teachers to know if our students are actually understanding the learning that needs to take place. In the classroom, it's quite easy to see who needs help and being able to wander around and give that assistance one-on-one. -on -one. If we don't have video conferencing tools available to us, it can become even harder when we can't communicate what we would like students to do. And sometimes even if we do have those tools available, we go away and we hope that students are understanding. So being able to create short little how-to videos is a really good way for asynchronous learning to occur. Students can go back at any time and watch our videos and listen to the instructions that need to take place. You could create short how-to videos, you could explain through different concepts, or you might want to actually explain a worksheet or a PowerPoint presentation and what you would like students to complete on each of the slides. So in PowerPoint, I'm gonna show you how to create or record your slideshow so that you could send this short video to your students. The first thing you need to have done is set up your PowerPoint with all of your slides and all of your text and anything else that you need to be in there, animations or transitions. Then make sure that you have saved your PowerPoint. And make sure you know where your PowerPoint is saved to. Then you can go up to the ribbon and click on slideshow. You might want to tick or untick play narrations, use timings and show media controls depending on what you're actually doing in your recording of your slideshow. This could be a how-to video, it could be explaining the different things on the slides, or it could be something like explaining what you would like students to complete in this project, which is what we're going to do today. So if I click record slideshow, it's going to go into the recording slideshow mode. Now for this one, I'm just explaining to students what I'd like them to be doing in this project. So I can explain that this is the cover page and I would like them to add their name onto here. Then you can click through the slides to explain what you'd like students to do on each slide. This is a 3D model showing the tectonic plates around the world. The first one starts near Australia. I'd like you to explain what is happening in this animation. Now, if you want to, you can actually use the pen as well. So if I click on pen, then I can see that there's other options like an arrow or a pen or a laser pointer or a highlighter. And I can choose a different pen color. At the moment's on red. I might want to change this. And then I could actually start to explain this in a little bit more detail that students can actually see and hear what I'm trying to say. So for example, I could say, I want you to put a title in this section here about what's actually happening on this slide. Then I'd like you to write some points in this area. And I want you to use the record audio feature and place it here and explain to me what is happening on this slide. Then I'd like you to duplicate this slide and use the morph transition feature and then rotate the world around to a different point and then do the same explanation on another slide but for a different part of the world. And then you can keep clicking through and explain to students what you want them to do. I'd like you to put a heading up here of what's actually happening and then explain to me what is happening in this animation here. What are we doing? If you can take this to the next level, and duplicate this slide and use the morph transition feature and then rotate this around so that we can see a different viewpoint and you can explain to me what is happening as well. Put a record audio feature in here that will put your record audio feature in here that will explain what is actually happening on this slide or in this animation. And then you can keep clicking through and explain to students exactly what you would like them to do on each slide. And once you've finished 
doing all of your explanation for them, you can go up to the top left hand corner and end your show. It will ask you, are you happy with your timings? And you can save and say yes. Now we've created a recorded video, but we haven't exported it out of PowerPoint yet. So we've recorded exactly what we want students to do with a bit of pen explanation, pointing to different things about the different slides. You should be able to see that you have timings underneath each of the slides for how long you spent talking. You should also see a little microphone, which will be you speaking on each of them. If you want, you can play back and listen to yourself talking. Once you've listened to all the slides and you're happy, what you can do is then export this as a video and that video will have the PowerPoint with your explanations on it. Then you could upload that short video onto their LMS, so Connect or Sector or whatever they're using. So now what we need to do is export this. So I'm going to click File Export and create a video file of myself explaining what I wanted students to do. I'm not going to rename this. Now down here is the file format. So at the moment it's PDF and that's not a video file. So we either want to choose MP4 or MOV. If you're using a Mac and MOV is pretty good, you can view these on Windows, but an MOV is actually quite difficult to view on an Android or even an iPad device. Sometimes you might need a different video player to view them. So let's choose MP4. You might also want to change the presentation quality, especially if you're going to be uploading it to an LMS, just to keep the file size low so that students aren't having to download a massive video file and it saves on bandwidth as well and then click export now this might take a few minutes to actually export if you look down in the bottom you can see that my video is now starting to process and export out once this finishes you can then go and view your video file once your PowerPoint recording has finished exporting, you can then go and find where it's saved. As I'm on a MacBook, I'll go into Finder and see if I can locate it. I might need to search for it. Now I can see it says Earth Science MP4, so I'm gonna test and see what's happened. Now I can talk through what I would like students to be doing on this. So I can explain that this is the cover page and I would like them to add their name onto here. So I can see that my recording has worked and I can upload this video to my LMS for students to work through. And I can also upload the PowerPoint for them to use and work through and then send back to me.